Welcome back, welcome back. Today, the goal is to give the trainers in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet all their perfect team. Now, for an open world Pokemon game like Scarlet and Violet, just so happens to be, we're gonna need level scaling. Yeah, it's cool going across the map to be Grusha first, but who cares you have to go back and bully a bunch of level 12 bugs. So, I'm gonna break the video down into three sections. Just like the game, we have The Path of Legends, Starfall Street, and Victory Road. First, I'm gonna talk about Arvin's story, where you face off against the five Titans. Since the Titans are wild Pokemon, I don't really need to worry about giving them teams. Level scaling is also pretty easy, as the level of the Titan would correspond to this list here. Its level would go up from level 15 all the way to 56. This list is actually based on the levels inside of the main game. The Pokemon Arvin uses will always match the Titan's level, just as it does in the main game. I'm also offering just one Pokemon in each battle. It would be too easy otherwise. One change I would make for the Titans in their second battle, I think they should call for help. Maybe lore-wise you could justify this by saying the smell of the Herba Mystica attracted another Pokemon. I think this should activate after the first turn, just like Gen 7. So the support for each Titan Pokemon I like to see are the Knackly line for Clop, Drifloon slash Drifloon for Bombardier, Cuffin slash Comparaja for Earthworm, Fampy slash Donphan for Great Tusk slash Iron Thread, and, does, <laughs> and Don Dozo and Tatsugiri together forever. Now all these Pokemon spawn in the area where the Titan is found and fall under the same type as the Titan. For Drifblim and Garganackle, I quite literally had no other choice, but Donphan is a no-brainer for the support, and then Cuffin was a choice I had between Varum or itself, but I decided to go with Cuffin since Reverum is already represented enough in the game. For Dondozo and Tatsugiri, forget the calling and support, have the two appear together, just have the commander ability activate, It'll basically work out as the battle does in the original game, but instead of being two separate battles, it's just one continuous battle due to the effect of the ability. So let's talk about the only trainer on this path, Arvin. As you might be able to see, we have a bit of a food vibe going on. A clam slash oyster, mushrooms, salt, peppers, with dog and squirrel. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious. Uh, I think the coolest thing we can do with this team is represent the five Herba Mystica. We already have some good ingredients to work with. Scovillian is spicy and Knackley is salty. Literally. Of course we'll be keeping Mabostiff though. He's a gosh dang good boy. We can't take him away from Arvin again. But we need the other three to represent our missing flavors. Firstly, I'm gonna replace his Squovit with Fido. Fido will represent sweet and be the first Pokemon you see Arvin use. I know it's bread, but bread can be sweet. And I'm not gonna say I'd eat dog spawn, but if we if we did, it'd probably be sweet and I'd enjoy the experience. But also it'll make for a good matchup later when he uses it against the false dragon titan Tatsugiri. Next, I'm gonna replace Toad School with Petalo. I feel bad removing a Gen 9 Pokemon but I went ahead with it anyways because Petalo's dex entries. It has multiple that point out how bitter its leaves are. Also, it's a plant possibly based on an onion to keep up with the food theme. Now, Toad School is grass ground, which is good against both the Paradox Dawn fan, but Toad School doesn't have any ground moves, so swapping it out for Petalo won't make a difference. Lastly, we need to swap Shelter out. The only Pokemon I could think of for this situation is Flapple, it evolves by using a tart apple, as in a sour apple. It also fits the theme by being food, and plus, it'll provide good support against Claw. So since we're adding scaling, depending on what order you obtain the badges, it'll determine if the Pokemon Arvin uses are fully evolved or not. Now, let's look at the final team. So I kinda added a third grass type to his team, but let's be honest, the reason Arvin's team is so hard to beat in the games is because he's so high leveled at that point. Typically when I faced him, I was 10 to 15 levels below him. So adding another grass type won't change that. It's not the end of the world. His story's all about finding the herbs. So he could have a bit of an emphasis on grass type Pokemon. If during the battles against the Titans, Arvin's Pokemon reach these thresholds, they will evolve. 
For the Nackley and Dashbone line, it's just the normal level they evolve at. For the two stone evolutions, Scovillian and Lilligant, I went with level 30. I thought it was a fair level for a single stage stone evolution to evolve. And finally, Flapple will always be evolved, because Applin doesn't really do anything. And it doesn't fit our theme. Next, let's talk about Starfall Street. So let's get these grunts out of the way. The ones in Mesa Goza are fine. Their battles come before scaling would even factor in. But then let's talk about the random trainers that appear in front of every team star base. Very simply, let their ace be two levels lower than their squad bases, and their weaker Pokemon should be three levels lower than the bosses. In terms of evolution, if their Pokemon is at a level it can't evolve, let it evolve. In regards to Pokemon who don't evolve by level up, you have the Sagan Squad Grunt who uses a Murkrow, have it be evolved at level 30 plus. And then we have Carmen's Primeape, evolve it at level 40 or higher. I'm not going to be giving these guys any additional Pokemon, they're just random grunts at the end of the day, I don't think they need full teams or anything. Next let's talk about Team Star bases, in terms of those auto battle sections. I guess it's different than taking on a series of grunts inside of a cave or a building, but it still leaves a lot to be desired. I don't know what slight adjustments could be made to make these sections actually entertaining, I say reducing the timer to 3 minutes instead of 10. Like how did they select 10 minutes as the right number for those? Like no game testing must have contributed to that number. There's no way. Someone had to have just been like, yeah, 10 minutes and that was the end of the discussion. Here's my pitch to make this better while still being auto battles, since that seems to be the new feature they want to push. Have 2 or 3 grunts have special Pokemon that can be terrestrialized. And these Pokemon are way harder to take down than the rest. So you can brute force it, but on the flip side, you could also build up your own Terra Orb Charge by taking down the random regular grunts. I think that would at least make these sections more than just walking around until you find more Pokemon and just thoughtlessly beating them. Let's move to the actual bosses now. So let's go in order of their levels in the game. First, we have Giacomo, Giacomo, Giacomo. His team in the game is Ponyard and his Starmobile. This will serve as the weakest his team can be. The Ponyard line will serve as his ace. On the screen, you'll see the amount of badges required for a Pokemon to evolve or to be added to his team. After obtaining 4 badges, we'll add the Mastiff line, as he uses it in the post game and it's a new Dark type line added in this generation. After 9 badges, we'll add Lokix to his team. He's never used it, but I think it's a new Pokemon that fits him. Honestly, more than it does the bug type gym leader KD. Then after 15 badges, let's add the last member of his team. During the main game, he uses Cacturn, Honchkrow, and Crookedile in the post game. I'm drawn to Honchkrow because it's basically THE evil team Pokemon, but let's go with Crookedile to be a little bit more unique. Now, let's talk about the Starmobile. Fighting the car was pretty cool. It was a good shock factor when you went in for the first time. It worked pretty well if you did the fire star base first like I did, but it kind of loses its luster when you do it five times. I think gameplay wise, each was fresh and fun and had a unique gimmick to the battle. But visually adding some weirdly bad textured flags didn't do enough to change up the experience. So I'm gonna throw up two concepts first. I think Giacomo Starmobile, if they want to keep the vehicle theme, could look like a Ford Mustang with a rev room on the front hood resembling a car like this. I also think they could make it look like a Batmobile, I guess that's the best way to put it. The Dark Knight, Dark Type, I think I'm onto something with that. But my other concept would be a Mecha Tyranitar, just a robotic Tyranitar powered by a rev room and some Verooms. It's a dark type Pokemon, plus we've seen Mecha Tyranitars before, and it makes for good foreshadowing for Iron Thorns later in the game. Also, no one loves Godzilla more than Pokemon. They can't stop making Godzilla Pokemon. Now let's move over to the fire base. So Mela uses a Torkoal and her Starmobile in the games. So in Gen 9, outside of the Paradox Pokemon, there are only two new fire lines in the game. So instead of Torkoal as her first Pokemon, she'll always use Armourouge. It's her ace in her rematch battle, and it just fits her really well. 
Yeah, it's fully evolved, but so is Torkoal. And you can have a level 1 armory technically. After 6 badges, we'll add our Torkoal. After 9, she can have her Houndoom. I could have picked Colossal or Arcanine, but I opted for the Dark type. That made more sense to me than another pure Fire type or a Rock type Pokemon. Lastly, after 15 badges, I'm adding Skeledirt. Scarlet and Violet really don't like to give up starters to trainers in the game. Honestly, more than most Pokemon games. Personally, I think it's a bit weird that the starters are rarely if ever seen. Like, are the starters supposed to be from a different region or time period? If so, my bad for adding them. But if not, yeah, let's add them to more teams. For her Starmobile, I would say it could be an old school car with flame decals, obviously. But also with a bunch of exhaust just shooting out fire. Or maybe a fire truck that's a fire truck, as in it shoots fire if I wasn't being clear. Of course, a rev room would be incorporated in the design. If they were gonna do a mecha Pokemon, I'd probably say Charizard. This is Pokemon at the end of the day. Even if it ain't in the region, they'll find a way to slip that lizard in. Plus, I'm sure Charizard is famous all over the Pokemon world. Jumping over to Tag Tree Thicket, we have the Navi Squad's Atticus. He uses a scum tank, Muck and his ace is a rev room on top of his rev room star mobile Literally, we can do better than this He's supposed to be a cosplaying ninja combining his interests in fashion and Japanese history for some reason he uh, He doesn't live in Japan, but his team does not really fit that theme in my opinion So if you face Atticus with zero badges, he'll just have a Grafai eye as his only normal Pokemon. No important trainers in the game use Grafii. It's an artist Pokemon, and it leading with Prankster could be an interesting gimmick for the battle. After six badges, we'll add Reverum to be the new ace, his new strongest Pokemon. The next team member I want to add is Toxicroak. He doesn't use it in the games, but I think it fits him better than it does Aerie. It's the type of poison type I think a team that he uses should be made up of. Lastly, after 15 badges, I'm adding Gengar. It's a fast poison type that literally hides in shadows. Unfortunately, there's no ninja themed poison type Pokemon, so this is the best team I could think of. For a Starmobile, I don't even want to be able to tell what it looks like. The cutscene before he sends it out should show the car's wheel kicking up dirt, cut to the exhaust just spewing out fumes, and then the car is completely impossible to see. It's just a cloud of just toxic fumes with just slightly being able to see the rever room inside of it. If you want to go with an actual Pokemon, uh, it have to be Greninja. It's not a poison type, but hey, it got a poison themed terror raid battle. If I'm picking a Pokemon, I'm picking the ninja Pokemon for Atticus. Next up is Ortega. He uses an Azumarill Wigglytuff and his ace is a Doxmon. He really likes cute Pokemon that would make good plushes. I'm talking like squishy Pokemon. So that's our theme that we're gonna be trying to follow. All right, so initially he'll use Fido and his Starmobile. After getting six badges, it'll evolve into a Doxmon. And on top of that, we'll add Hatrim to the team. He uses Hatterene in the post game, but in my opinion, Hatena and Hatrim fit him more, so I really want to get it on his team before it's fully evolved. The next Pokemon we'll add is Azumarill at 9 badges, and finally Wigglytuff at 12 badges. For the unique Starmobile, let's go with a Parade Float. I think a motorized float would be really fitting. Have him sit on a pink throne, cover it up in decorations, ribbons everywhere, glitter, have glitter cannons firing. If you want to go with mechanical Pokemon, I think a Pokemon that isn't fully evolved would work best. In contrast to all the other mecha Pokemon I'm adding. I'm going to go with Jigglypuff, a particularly squishy Pokemon, as well as another Gen 1 Pokemon of course. This is Game Freak we're talking about. Obviously Gen 1 Pokemon are getting the most love. Our final Team Star boss is Aerie. She uses Toxicroak, Passimian, Lucario, and Annihilate. 
So Mankey's gonna be the Pokemon that is carried all the way through. The second Pokemon will be added after six badges. And I'm choosing Hawlucha. It's based on a wrestler. I think that fits the wrestler theme trainer pretty well. Next up, after nine badges, let's give her Lucario. She seems to be a fan of hand-to-hand -hand fighting Pokemon. I really wanted to add Paldean Tauros, but it doesn't really fit that concept. So for the last Pokemon, I'm gonna add Passimian. There's really not many options, so I might as well keep Passimian since nobody ever uses that Pokemon. All right, lastly, I think her Starmobile should be a muscle car. It's a pun, sorry, but the car transforms into a wrestler looking transformer, if that makes you feel better. Or if you wanted it to be a Pokemon from the start, it could be a Graplock. I think a mechanical tentacle monster would be cool. It could be like a Kaiju, but then it also has like wrestling moves and grappling moves because it's a Graplock. All right, that's enough Team Star for now. Let's talk about Clavel. I don't have much to change. I don't think this battle needs to have scaling. Like if you beat the Team Star bases first and come to challenge Clavel, you're getting beat down by a level 60 team. Maybe you guys disagree, but this is equivalent to like the Elite Four for this path of the game. And I wouldn't give the Elite Four a bunch of level 30 Pokemon. But to improve his team, his only Gen 9 Pokemon is the starter. So I'm going to switch Oranguru out for Roboska. As mentioned in my last video, nobody uses that Pokemon and it has a similar vibe to Oranguru. Also, I'm switching his Poltegeist out and going to give him a new Pokemon, Cyclozar. No important trainer uses it, and I think the director of the academy having a Cyclozar would be really cool. I think it could serve as basically his ace outside of the starter that's left behind at the beginning of the game. Lastly, we have our final battle of this path in the form of Penny. I'm not changing anything. In an ideal world, we'd have more evolutions so she wouldn't have to use all three Kanto EVs. But, like, Umbreon suits her more than Espeon, and then Leafeon and Glaceon, either or is fine. I can't say one is more fitting for her team than the other. Her theme is Eevee, I'm not gonna change that, so no big overhaul. Okay, that brings us to Victory Road, our biggest section. Let's start with the first trainer we face in these games, Nimona. Now, Nimona actually scales her team technically. She faces you as you approach your third gym, after you defeat your 5th gym, and once you enter the 7th gym. And this will trigger in this order, no matter the order of the gyms you take on. In terms of actually switching her team, I don't feel the need to switch her Pokemon out for stronger mods. I do think her Palmy should know Quick Attack when you battle her before entering Mesa Goza, because if you have a Wooper or any ground type for that matter, she just loses automatically because that thing will just spam Thundershock over and over again and do no damage. Also, give her Earthworm in that last rival battle before the Elite Four. I wanted to have Shed Tail. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of times where she tries to use Shed Tail with less than half HP. But if it works on somebody, they're just going to have to eat Aqua Steps or Torch Songs. Flower Trick 2, I guess. It just doesn't boost its stats. Alright, let's move to the Gym Leaders. So in the games, every gym leader either has three or four Pokemon. Instead, gym leaders face first and second will have three Pokemon, third through six will have four Pokemon, and the final two will have five Pokemon. Giving them six is just unrealistic. The only gym leader to use six Pokemon in their first battle is Blue, who you face post game and is a champion. Need I explain more? Going in order of lowest level in the games to the highest, we have Katie of Cartondo. So her ace is Fido slash Doxbud. I don't care who else uses that Pokemon, the significance of a bugbear or a bear bug does not match up to this perfect pairing. The pastry chef is gonna use the bread Pokemon. Yeah, I've given it to so many trainers, but it suits all of them. So in this section, I'm gonna match the scaling to how Nimona works based on the gym badges instead of all the badges in the game. The Pokemon League only recognizes those official gym badges. It doesn't care about the one Arvin made in arts class. I guess that logic is sound. Plus it makes this segment unique. So after obtaining one badge, Tarantula evolves. After two badges, both Nimble and Fido will evolve. And the icing on the cake is we add Frostmoth. 
I think it kind of fits her design and it's a buggy bug Pokemon, which seems to be the type of Pokemon she likes, but still it has some elegance to it. Lastly, after six badges, she gets Volcarona. So my thought process was, once upon a time, when the sun was blocked out, Volcarona acted as the sun, therefore it's probably great at baking. Mmm, perfect team. Our second gym leader is Brasius. I'm gonna keep all of his original team, consisting of Petalo, Smolib, and Sudowoodo as the ace. After two badges, we'll add Sunflora. So he doesn't use a Sunflora in the games, but his town is themed around them. I assume they didn't add it because the gym challenge is all about Sunflora already, but if we're gonna have more than three Pokemon to his team, for his team, it's hard for me not to include it. Also, he is Dolive now. Petalo can evolve if you face him fourth, now for the last team member, I'm adding Scovillain. It's a new grass type Pokemon. The main reason I'm adding it is because its face looks like theater masks. And Brasius loves the arts. So there's the eighth badge team. Okay, time for my favorite gym leader, Iono. And she's the first trainer we have to actually decrease her number of team members. Her initial team will be Watrel, Tadbolt, and her ace will be Mistrevious. If face second, she'll have her signature belly bolt, and naturally, she'll have her normal team when face third. When face seventh, we'll add Rotom. If you really want to spice it up, she can use Rotom Wash, He, or Mo, based on the one that has the best matchup for your starter. She's a streamer, so Rotom can be like her tech support, so nothing goes wrong, <laughs> so nothing goes wrong while she's streaming. It'd be cool to showcase the Rotom forms. More interesting than giving her an electrode like they did in the post game. Up fourth, we have our Sushi Chef Kofu. So this gen has two sushi themed Pokemon. And he never uses them. Not even in the post game. I, I don't understand, even if you're like, oh yeah, the Titan overlap. Uh, you left two spots open for the post game rematch. So uh, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna make some changes here. So we'll have his initial team be Wiglet, Velusa, and Crab Brawler. All these Pokemon are ingredients commonly used in sushi, so they can stick around. If face third, he'll have his signature Crabominable, as well as a Tatsugiri. If the Titan is curly form Tatsugiri, Kofu can have Droopy or Stretchy form. So he's usually fourth, but now he'll have his normal team, plus a Tatsugiri. The last change will come after Badge 6, where he adds Quillfish. So I chose Quillfish because it's a puffer fish, and to serve puffer fish, you need to get a special certification. So it'll kind of show he's a sushi master. Dondoza was the obvious choice, but giving him both of the false dragon titans seemed like a bit much. Next, we have so-called free thinkers, favorite gym leader Larry. He's depressed and has a dead end job. Stop pandering to me, game freak. If Larry's challenged first, we will simply just unevolve his Pokemon, so Kamala, Dunsparce, and Staravia acting as the ace. Shout out to the Dunsparce. When I fought Larry for the first time, I genuinely didn't realize it was Dunsparce's evolution until I checked my Pokedex later. Badge 3 will add Tandem Mouse, and it'll evolve for Badge 6, where it joins Larry's normal team. Double Entendre. Lastly, for Badge 7 and 8, we add Slacking. He will Giga Impact and Population Bomb some people to oblivion. That last one sounds too accurate. Alright, next up we have the MC of RIP. She uses four Pokemon and is faced in a double battle. When faced first, she'll use Shuppet Grievard and her ace will be an underleveled Toxtricity. We'll next add her Mimikyu starting to take form of her original team. Rhyme's team will look just as it should as the 6th gym leader. Lastly, we'll add the Gen 9 Pokemon Bramblegast. She uses Spiritomb in the post game, and I can't say Spiritomb makes more sense or it would fit her better, so I'm going to pick the new Pokemon every day of the week. Gym leader 7 is Tulip, the psychic type gym leader. Her weakest team will be Girafferig, Flittle, and Fluette. Team number 4 will be Curlia, since she uses Gardevoir in the original game. Her team is starting to take form. The final addition will be added when she's phase 7. It'll be her normal team with a female Ndidi added. I chose it so it could set up terrain for her team, giving a new dynamic to her team to make it a bit more unique than the other gym leaders. 
I thought this would be cooler than giving her a Gallade like they did in the post game. Finally, we reached Paldea's strongest gym leader, Grusha. So I want him to use a Snover. He really should have had a Snow Warning Pokemon originally in my opinion, so this is our chance to add it. His second member will be Satoddle, giving him a chance to use Slush Rush instead of Thick Fat. And the team is rounded out with Swablu. This Swablu will have Blizzard to take advantage of the Snow Warning. Two badges will grant the chance to face off against his Cub Chew, another Slush Rush Pokemon. And his last and final team member added to his team will be Weavile. I decided to ditch the Frost Moth since I gave it to Katie earlier, and I think the speedy Ice type Pokemon fits the world famous Skier. Lastly, as an Easter egg, if you battle him 8th, he should have an Arctivax for a full team of 6. I think it'd be a cool Easter egg and would continue the legacy of having a definitive 8th gym leader, since this video would technically get rid of that concept. Let's move on over to the Pokemon League and talk about the Elite Four. These guys aren't getting scaled down teams. That'd be weird and I don't think that's a good idea. I will make a few changes to their teams though. Instead of Doug Trio, let's give Rika a Hapaldon. It fits in better with her Chonker themed team and it'll cause a sandstorm to annoy challengers. I'm going to be keeping Poppy's team exactly the same. Moving to Larry part 2 though, I'm going to swap out his Tropius for Talonflame. I'm sorry for taking away the little shine Tropius gets, but plain Jane Larry should use 5 birds instead of 4 birds and a dinosaur. I googled it, it's based on a Musa genera, which is a banana, so I'm going to pretend that Tropius is supposed to just be a giant banana, instead of the plant dino it clearly is. Last. And the strongest member of the Elite Four, we have Hassel. His team is fine, I just want his Backscaler to have four moves. It's the only Pokemon in the entire Elite Four with three moves. I don't know if this is a mistake, or if they really wanted to just click Glaive Rush. Hard to tell that sort of thing with Scarlet and Violet, but I think it should have Earthquake no matter what, so it can deal some actual damage to Steel-type Pokemon. So, let's move on to the top champion, Gita, famous for having a disappointing team. So, Aspothra, Glamora, and King Gambit are gonna stay. Everyone else, you're getting the boot. Now, one thing about Gita is she Terra rocks, which no one else does in the main story. Also, Glamora's design really fits her, so she's gonna lead off with it. So, the Pokemon that sets up Toxic Spikes isn't the last Pokemon anymore. Also, she can Terra it right off the bat, at the start of the battle. It throws people off since every other trainer in the game has waited until the very end to Terra. Now, King Gambit will be the last Pokemon on her team, and it will be the same level as her Glamora, kind of like her second ace. It also gives its ability Supreme Overlord its max power. Now to round out the middle, we have Espothra still, and the next team members will be Dragapult, Sarah Ledge, and Paldean Tauros, which will be Fire in Scarlet, and the Water Form in Violet. So here's my reasoning for the team. Espothra is cool, she uses it already, and it's a new Pokemon. Yeah, Tulip uses it, but Tulip actually mentions that her and Gita have a similar vibe, so it makes all the more sense that they would share a Pokemon. Next, let's talk about our new additions. So Tauros got three new forms in the game, and despite that, all you really see of Tauros is its basic pure fighting Paldean form, and all it does is be really annoying in the overworld. So I think it makes for a great addition, and we can take advantage of it having so many forms all of a sudden. So next let's talk about Dragapult. Having a pseudo legendary is a pretty common characteristic of champions, so I want to give her one, and none suited her better than Dragapult does. Plus, all the previous pseudos in this game feel so wasted, like no one uses any of them. They really just wanted to add them to the game because of their popularity, and they just don't do anything. They don't really fit into the world. So now, it kind of gives them a purpose outside of just popularity. Lastly, we have Sarah Ledge. It's a Pokemon I think suits her. It's a pretty popular Pokemon, and it's fitting of the champion. It kind of reminds me of Cynthia's Lucario. It has that same kind of vibe. It's a very strong design, but 
it's only used by one random trainer in the entire game. So I think this team as a whole has a way cooler aura about it and is much more fitting of a champion. Now this team might overshadow Nimona's team, so just give her a post game rematch where you face the team she originally took on the league with. Problem solved, Game Freak. Also for Sada and Turo, their teams can stay the same. I don't know how it would change it while sticking to its original theme, and their theme's perfect so I wouldn't change the theme either. Before this video ends, I should address the 272 random trainers. No, I'm not individually breaking them all down. I'm gonna outline what Game Freak should do to scale them. You just give them all a set level per badge. If a trainer, say, has one Pokemon before you have any badges, that Pokemon's level 11, two levels below an important trainer's ace would be. Say if you face a trainer with two Pokemon, when you have 11 badges, they'll be level 33, three levels below the ace of an important trainer or titan and just how set levels a Pokemon should evolve at. So keep this in mind for Gen 10, Game Freak. If you enjoyed, subscribe. Well, later.